Hey everyone and welcome to today's tutorial where we are going to be taking a look at how to create reflections within Octane. So I thought this would be quite fun to do because it's fairly simple and it also gives you a lot of um, opportunities when doing screen reflections um, using Octane. So this is our node, uh, node tree setup and over here I have just set up um, two watches just to illustrate how the re reflections are going to work. So if you just jump out into our scene here, normally when you do this stuff, you would have like um, two screens, like the one that showcases the, um, the, the logo or the, uh, in this case, the image, for example. And then you would also have a, a sort of like a cover in glass or plastic. But I actually figure out a way that we could create both um, those things within the same material. In 3D, it, yeah, 3D allows us to just use one um, sort of like one object and then using different kind of float techniques, we can float between two different materials um, and it's reflection and transparency. So, um, so yeah, so, so I think this will be quite fun to do and you will see a lot of benefits using this sort of method. So as you can see over here, we have a fairly nice setup. So if I just choose our material, this is our node tree, but I'm going to delete this and create it from scratch. So let me just jump out here and see. So now it's just black. So first of all, we are going to be using a universal material and the universal material will give us our first glass material. So for the glass material, we're going to take the roughness all the way down. And um, I'm just going to take these things in here so it's easier to see. Let me just take it up a bit just like this. Also this one here. And we can just take this one off because just remember the roughness is set to zero. So let's just keep it. And then what we need is that we're going to need our image also. Or first of all, I think we'll just add the second material, which is a diffuse material. So this material is going to function um, as sort of our base uh, image, like the, lo the logo of the watch that you see. Um, so it's going to be a diffuse material. And uh, yeah, that's basically or we're not going to be doing anything to these um, sort of things here. And then we're going to composite them with a composite material node. And I always like to use these composite material or composite textures within Octane because they are really powerful. So I'm going to add the diffuse material to the material slot too. And I'm just going, I think I need to enable the material too. I think this is like a new sort of thing in the, um, newest octane version i don't know why they added it but it just says mat one enable so you can sort of like apply or, or skip the material using these buttons here so i'm going to enable both of them and then i'm going to take our universal material into the material one here and now i'm going to add our image the the image that we are going to use so i just found this one here, which is just the uh, symbol like um, clock showing the, the time. And let us add this one to our um, diffuse material here. And then also, and let me just plug this one into here. So now you can see that we have sort of starting to see our image down here. But I want it to be brighter as sort of like a, an LED or screen material. So I'm going to use a texture um, texture emission node and I'm going to plug that in here let me just take this one out here and I'm going to take this one into the emission and then also um, uh, the the image into the the um, texture emission here and I'm going to enable service brightness and now you can see that it's really uh, bright so I'm just going to dial this one down to one normally I, I go just in between numbers of one and two, I think one will be fine. And you can see, we see also it's sort of like being copied 
uh, or tiling um, onto the, our display. So I'm just going under the border mode and just set it to um, black color. Um, so we just see the image that we have here. And I have already like UV um, mapped it and all those things. So this tutorial is just for the screen reflections. Um, but yeah, so this is basically it. And um, what we also need to do is that we need to take our um, our image into the um, into the universal material. And as you can see here, this is how our screen material look. It's just uh, the logo and it's sort of like LED bright. But as you can see, it's purely black all around. So we don't see anything. And if I take our universal material and plug it in, you can see that we get this hard reflections here. Uh, but we lose the details within our logo itself because now we can only illustrate it in like this sort of like glass texture. So what we need to do is that we need to sort of find a middle ground depending on our scenes between the universal material and the diffuse material with the texture emission image on. So the node that we're going to use for that is a node called, as you can see when I plug this one in, it takes the second material and puts it up first. So we're going to use the material mask for this and the node that we're going to use is um, a node called float uh, to grayscale. Uh, yeah, float to uh, grayscale. And it just means that it can float between two values being either the diffuse material or the universal material. So I'm going to plug in the texture uh, into the material mask. And now you can see it sort of blends the two here. Um, it's going to the first one, I think. But if I go to, yeah, now you can see it's the universal material at value zero. And if I go all the way up to the first value, like um, full full value uh, one, you can see now we get our diffused material. So what I like to do is I like to dial this one down. So let's say 0 0.5, for example, and you can still see our uh, texture emission working fine, but we also get the sort of like reflection that we need. And we can also take it further down 0 0.25 and now we get more reflection. So you can see how you can start to use this to sort of dial in the, um, how you like it. And we can bump up also the um, surface, uh, the, the power mode here. So you sort of, you can see if I bump it all the way up to five, it goes more through. So that's why, but I normally tend to keep it at one or between one and two just to keep the, the realism. It's normally working for me, but we can say zero, uh, 1.5 and keep the value at 0 0.25. Or we can bump it up a bit and we lose more reflections. Or we can take it all the way down to 0 0.1 and we you know, get more reflections in the screen. But keep it around the, the, uh, the middle. You will sort of get a blend between this, this, those two. But I like to see the reflections more, so I... Yeah, I normally take it down to 0 0.35 maybe. And now we can start to see this one working really fine. And um, if I just go out, out here, you can see when I rotate, we sort of get this like, you can see how the um, reflections would work in like an animation kind of piece. I, I have this one on my Instagram animated and you can go check that on, uh, check that out on there. Um, to see like the, the, the full resolution and the, the full use case of this particular scene here. Um, but yeah, I think this is it for, for this tutorial. Um, I've been busy with client work in the past month, so that's why I haven't been able to upload um, any videos for the past month. But hopefully um, I will get time to do more uh, regular uploads here on YouTube. I also uh, am doing a series over on my tr uh, Patreon where I build an entire scene and doing style frames for like a spec project. Um, so if you're interested in, in that and also getting even more into my workflow and stuff like that, um, you can go check that one out. Um, but yeah, I want to start doing more YouTube videos and um, yeah, hopefully I will 
get one more within the next couple of weeks so um but yeah so i hope you um learn something from this and can use it in your own renders um it's just a nice way to do screen reflections so yeah thank you very much and see you in the next one bye